Hello and welcome back to Let's Play Wrath of the Righteous with me, Bring It Down. Let's talk to Nenio, Nenio, Nenio. I'll go ahead. Wearing a robe? Check. Baphomet symbol around the neck? Check. Crazy eyes? Check. Note to self, bring a mirror next time to be able to adjust the optimal level of eye craziness. Everything is ready for the experiment. The woman produces a crumpled piece of paper from her sleeve and takes notes. An audience. Problematic, but not critical. You there, boy. Stay out of this. It is counterproductive to stand in the way of scientific progress. The woman turns to you, and for a moment, she focuses on her wandering, distracted gaze on your face. Who are you calling boy? Who's that? I don't know her. Greetings, boys and girls. I am your sister in sin, a devotee of Lord Baphomet's dark will, and so on and so forth. She looks like one of us, but she talks kind of weird. Who's there with you? The cultist finger points your way. Who? Oh, them! Just an audience, they don't matter. Consider them a supplementary component of the coming experiment. A shrug, remaining silent. In the name of our Lord Baphomet, please be so kind as to undertake a little test of your competency in our wicked cause. Seems the cultist wish to say something, but the woman won't let him. Let's start with something simple. So here's my first question. What is Lord Baphomet's favorite weapon? She produces a pencil and a crumpled piece of paper from her sleeve. Fun of that, that's the, uh, the glaive. We will not answer to you. Our lord can wield any kind of weapon. He is all-powerful. Wrong. He wields no weapons at all. He doesn't need any. He just gores his enemies with his horns. Actually, it's Azergal, a glaive made of red adamantine. That is correct. But still, boy, no prompting, please. The woman turns to you with a glimmer of interest in her eyes. This experiment has taken quite a surprising turn. I would never have expected the followers of the Great Baphomet to be baffled by such a simple question. Fine. Let's recalibrate the difficulty and proceed with the next question. Please name Lord Baphomet's sacred animal. The woman frowns. It's the Minotaur, right? A bull! Of course everybody knows that. Yep. And a cow. Oh, it's an aurochs, as a matter of fact. I'd like to ask you to stop prompting them, but it seems they could do with a prompt or two. The woman throws a vague glance at you. It appears the experiment has yielded results which are as unexpected as they are incredible. Baphomet's cultists have not the slightest idea about who Baphomet really is, let alone any in-depth knowledge of his ideology or philosophy. I'm positive that this news will cause a sensation in widest scientific circles. Damn it! She's right. I'm a shitty excuse for a cultist. And my mother used to tell me to become a plowman. Hey, take it easy. We've only had two questions. You there, come on, ask another one. We'll get the next one. You ask them some more. They might still manage it. Is there any sense in continuing? You cannot answer the simplest of questions. I am ashamed of all of you, as cultists and as individuals. <laughs> Please, ask again. I can answer. I'm sure I can. How do you spell Baphomet's name? Woman size. B A F A. Oh, screw it! <laughs> to hell with Baphomet! I thought it was gonna be fun, but instead there are all these questions. I'm done here. I'm going back to my home village, back to my mother. The cultist throws his weapons on the ground in a fit of anger. Hey, wait! You there! How dare you stir up discord in our ranks? Grab her and tie her up and her entire entourage too! The experiment is complete. Unable to deal with the questions, the cultists decide to deal with the examiner instead. A typical reaction for a person who has never been burdened with any intelligence. Now you're gonna start hitting each other, aren't you? Please, proceed. I won't interrupt. Save the last one. Oh, I forgot for to me. read her other. Uh, things, the great text. The woman makes a note and then she raises her eyes. There we go. Alright. Be a pretty easy fight. Uh, actually, let's do it this way. Let's try this way. Everyone after him and we will charge into that archer. Uh, 
Uh, let's put him on melee. It's just cultists. I'm not too worried about the fight. I'll cut you wide open. Surrender or else. Too late for apologies. Did you see that? Cover me, all right? The absence of an answer is an answer, too. That's the same thing that stranger said at the Market Square. Or if it's the same character, or if they're part of the same like, organization. The result is statistically predictable, especially considering their intelligence level. The woman examines the cultist remains. What about you, boy? Are you ready to answer some questions for the good of science? Let's proceed with the experiment. My first question is simple. Which colors does the goddess Iomade prefer? The woman turns the, over the crumpled piece of paper to the blank side. You have the slightest idea, but perhaps you can guess. But who are you? What's this all about? I am the one asking questions here. Answer them, and then I'll satisfy your curiosity. The woman pierces you with a stern look, her brows furrowed. I am a day... It's red and white, right? That was the color of, um, the shield we found. I thought it was gold and white. Oh no, I don't know. Um, yeah, red and white. This answer is correct. It is comforting to meet at least one educated person in the melting pot of ignorance that is Canabras today. The woman makes a note on the piece of her paper. Let's proceed. Did Aradin take part in any crusade before he died? Let's see. Aradin was a mortal Aslanti who raised the Star Stone from the bottom of the Inner Sea, and in so doing so, or in so doing, founded the city of Absalom and ascending to godhood. Prophecy told of his return to Galarian and the beginning of a new age of glory. On the eve of his return, however, his clerics were cut off from his power, and terrible storms racked the world. Now presumed dead, Aradin's demise ushered in the current age of lost omens. Doesn't tell me. You know for sure that Aridan died not long before the world wound opened and the first crusade began. No, he didn't. Your answer is correct. Aridan's death dates to 4606, and that is precisely the year when the world wound was opened. The first crusade started back in 4622. The woman makes a note on a piece of on the piece of paper. Your knowledge would make Mendev's crusaders proud. My final question is. What is the title that Arilu Vorlesh bears? Is she the architect of the world wound, the lord of the labyrinth, or the border inquisitor of the shapeless abyss? Well, it's not lord of the labyrinth. That's Baphomet. You're positive that Arilu Vorlesh is known as the architect of the world wound. Yeah, so the architect of the world wound. That's correct. Most excellent. You successfully answered all of my questions. Splendid. Amazing. This is a breakthrough. This... I thank you for your cooperation. The woman breaks off, looks at you, and catches her breath. It seems to me that I owe you an explanation. My name is Nenio. I am an explorer, a pilgrim, a yet-to-be-recognized scientific luminary, future author of the great Encyclopedia Galarianica, and rector of all Absalom's universities at once. Future rector, I should say. I also know several spells. The woman blinks several times. Now, can you finally tell me what you're getting at with all those questions? It is so heartening to see you strive for knowledge. I have been conducting an experiment comparing the intellectual abilities of the average cultist with those of the average crusader. And I must admit that you passed the test with flying colors. This does offer a glimmer of hope for the future of crusade. I have always claimed that despite the popular beliefs about the limited intellectual abilities of those in the army, at least some of them can be considered educated. It pleases me to see that I was correct. <laughs> Okay. You trying to say that I'm mediocre? Yes. Nenio scans you once from again from head to toe. Why do you why do you keep calling me boy? I have a name, you know. I apologize for an injury to your ego, but your name is irrelevant on the grand scale of the universe. Thus, it cannot possibly interest me. I will forget it as soon as I hear it. To avoid unnecessary confusion, I'd prefer to not know it at all. 
The Canabras isn't safe right now. Shall we join forces? Do you wish to become my follower? To accompany me on my expeditions to the World Wound? To assist me in my experiments? To run errands for me? Perhaps even to write down my deepest thoughts for the benefit of future generations? Oh, how splendid! Of course, I agree! Truth be told, I have no money to pay you. But you will be aiding the progress of science, and that is its own reward. If we join forces, you have to follow my instructions during our, our expeditions. Eh? Huh? What? Oh, yes, the dangers and these battles. Of course, I will follow your orders. I place my life in your capable hands, so I can focus on the things that really matter. Anya focuses her wandering eyes on you. I agree. Excellent. You're hired. To think that I finally found someone to accompany me. 27 crusaders before you said no. Not one of them saw the undeniable appeal of my offer. Your first assignment is to take me to a safe place. I have to admit that today's experiment has left me quite tired. Alright, we're going back to the Defender's Heart anyway. We'll meet her back there and, um... I know the way. There's loot afoot. Alright. Let's do it once around, because it's a unique encounter, so there might be Follow stuff me. hidden hidden about. Never be too safe. As it should be. Is that a trap? Now what is it that? might be a trap. Long sort of detriment. Some other stuff. See? Can't hide oh, from me. A bunch of stuff back here. That is not far. That was lucrative. Alright. Get out of here, grab all of our stuff, and head back to the Defender's Heart. A few quests to turn in, so some easy experience. I am prepared. The Everybody's gonna attack him, but I'm gonna charge in first. Get another obstacle. Oh, there's more than one. Amelia, you're gonna you take that guy for me. Stab you or zap you? Why not both? Oh, this is how it feels. Oh, they're blocking me. That's okay. Took him out on top. Let's get out of here before we get struck by lightning. I think we have three quests to turn in. I know the way. Double check that though. That's easier to check from the world map. Alright, here's Ramian. Ramian's face is de deceptively serene. It'd be easy to think that the Asamar has been lounging around. His rolled up sleeves and the traces of blood on his fingers real he has barely stopped to catch his breath before going to help the injured. Oh, it's you. Praise Desna. I said we would meet again. Remind me, who are you? I'm Remian of Edme, prior of the Temple of Desna. Or rather, I was the prior while the temple was still standing. Now I'm a humble priest, healing the defenders of this makeshift fortress to the best of my ability. Did you really know about the demon attack before it happened? Alright, so we've already read that. Uh, 
Alright, uh, what are you doing here? I what people were doing all over the city. Healing the injured, comforting the grieving, counseling the lost. Alas, the goddess did not gift me with the ability to resurrect the dead. Yasumar offers a sad smile. This tavern may be the city's last stronghold of resistance against the demons. Our last hope. We cannot let it slip away. How can you help us when we attack the great garrison? Oh, Remy gives you a cryptic smile. You know, Desna is an unpredictable goddess. Who knows how she will come to the aid of her faithful children? I had a dream where she sang the demons a lullaby. They fell into a deep sleep, just like innocent babes. What do you think my dream augurs? I have to go. If there's anything else you can do to save Canabras, please do it. Alright, bulk selling. We have enough for the breastplate already. Probably not going to use that club. I need to see... Oh, she's a scroll savant. Okay, so let's see. So she has the scholar background, uh, adds use magic device and knowledge arcana to the list of her class skills. Uh, she also gets scribe scrolls as a bonus feat. Uh, she's focused in illusion. And she worships, worships Nethys, that makes sense. So she gets a uh, plus one to the difficulty class for all saving throws against spells from the illusion uh, school of magic. What does she have here? Spell penetration. You spells break through uh, spell resistance more easily than most. You get a plus two bonus on caster level checks. One to twenty plus caster level made to overcome a creature's spell resistance. Cantrips. All wizards get those. Wizard proficiencies. All simple weapons, right? Club, dagger, heavy crossbow, light crossbow, and quarterstaff. Scroll focus. A scroll savant adds half of his class level, a minimum of one, as a bonus on use magic device checks. We always take 10 on use magic device checks to cast a spell from a scroll if 10 on a roll is enough for a successful skill check. Arcane bond object. A bonded object can be used once per day to restore any one spell that the wizard had prepared for this day. Scribe scrolls allows you to craft scrolls during camping. Abjuration is our opposition school to uh, illusion. And Necromancy. Then she has Blinding Ray. As a standard action, you can fire a Shimmering Ray at any foe within 30 feet as a ranged touch attack. Ray causes creatures to be blinded for one round. Uh, creatures with more hit dice than your wizard level are dazzled for one round in, uh, one round per level instead. You can use this ability a number of times per day equal to 3 plus your intelligence modifier. And that's all she's got. Well, she's good at all of her lures, which makes sense given her uh, personality thus far. My right, blur is really good, and Oh, sure, it is mirror image. Okay. Well, in that case, I'll just grab invisibility, so she's good at that. Alright, well, since she's a wizard, I don't have to care about selling all of this stuff. Let's double check it all before I do so. Oh, that's right, I didn't check to see what this was when I picked it up. The Longsword of Detriment. This plus one longsword deals additional one, plus one negative energy damage on a hit. We have someone who specializes in longswords. Did I lose that stun effect? I wonder if... She can't use this. OK, 
Okay, I won't get rid of the scimitar yet. Alright, what else can we sell? Get rid of that. Alright, let's buy this breastplate. So, living ram. Whenever the wearer of this plus one breastplate uses the charge combat maneuver and hits an enemy, they deal an additional 1 to 6 bludgeoning damage, and the enemy has to pass a reflex saving throw, DC 17, to become prone. So, bonus damage and crowd control. I mean, there's no downside. We'll definitely be grabbing that for my main character. Not really worried about sneak attacks. This would also be nice to have. I can't quite afford it. When I sell my half plate plus one, I might be able to. Plus, the breastplate looks so good in this game. Okay, so we're going to grab this as well. So whenever the wielder of this plus one buckler receives a critical hit, they're affected with the effect of a mirror image spell that produces two mirror images that last two rounds. I mean, it is... I don't know. Maybe not depending on the critical hit. Let's not worry about that right now. Here's the uh, tieflings. Look who it is. Tiefling raises a hand in greeting. Who would have thought that I'd end up with the up in the Crusader army? Go figure. Remind me again. Who are you? I call the tieflings. We will. All right, I've already read all that. Uh, did Erebeth accept you? With open arms. She knows exactly who I am and where I'm from. But she's come down with a convenient case of amnesia where I'm concerned. Who can blame her? The city's in a bad way. You don't turn down help in a situation like this. No matter what quarter it comes from. How can you help us when we attack the Great Garrison? I'll tell you straight. We're not getting involved in any fighting. Warriors we ain't. But we can scout. Sneak right under the demons' noses. Look for traps and hidden doors. In other words, we can smooth the path for your whole operation. Then all you'll have to do is go in there and bump off the demons. Nothing to it. Hey, you're Thieflings. Why aren't you with Charisma and the rest of them? Looky here. Somebody seems very well informed. Even though, the, even though the name of our leader. Things started heating up. Sister Charisma betrayed us all. Now it's every Tiefling for himself. We're all scrambling to claim our share and get the heck out of here. We're supposed to meet in a prearranged location. Once we survive, that is. We went to the Great Garrison to get our stash. Look how that turned out. One of the gang got trapped in the rubble. So here's your answer. It's now every man for himself. And that means that we're free to do what we want. Alright, I'm going now. See you. Good luck out there. Don't get don't go getting trapped under any rubble now. As it should be. Alright. I'm gonna go talk to Wolgif and Asila's companions, if I'm not mistaken. Maybe Irabeth as well? Oh, and Forn. I think that's the three that we have to do. Erebeth rubs her red and tired eyes. Any success? How is the city? Found Jenna Dory like you asked. Yes, thank you. It's good to have her back. We need every fighter we can get. Erebeth frowns. I suppose it's asking too much to want fighters that are sober as well. Alright, so here's... Silo's friends. The Defender's Heart greets you with unexpected liveliness. Beyond the walls of the tavern, the once bustling and festive city lies in ruins. But somehow none of that can be felt within these walls. The people in the room are talking, laughing, raising toasts, even softly singing. It doesn't look like typical, typical tavern revelry, but nor is it the grim vigilance of recent days. Sila waves to you. She's sitting on a table with the trio you met previously. The knight, the half-elf, and the red-headed halfling. Don Quixote, come. Let me properly introduce you to Ellen, Janna, and Curl, fearless warriors of the League of the Inspiring Cart. Sila pushes a mug of beer toward you and speaks softly. It's me who convinced Irabeth to use what Janna, Curl, and Elin found for a little party. 
you look out the window, you might think the end times have come and the abyss has devoured us all. I thought some simple pleasures, good food and good company, could keep the gloom at bay. Sila looks at you hesitantly, as if trying to gauge your reaction. Have I ever turned out merrymaking in good company? Ah, let's raise our mugs, my friends. Wait, I'm not ready for another toast yet. It's not every day I drink with paladins, knights, and sword lords. Are we just going to sit here with grim faces? I say we get to know each other a little better, so we have better reasons to toast. Now tell me about you and your order, Ellen. Or Elin. As stories goes, or as stories go, it's not very entertaining. I was born far to the south in Anduron. I lost my parents early, led the life of a simple mercenary, often questioned the path I had chosen. I'm proud of my sword skills, I enjoy training and drills, I'm not afraid of battle. Risking my life for coin. It takes a special mindset to choose that lot with no regrets. You have to want to risk your blood. I saw too many of my friends die, I wondered if it was worth it. So in the end, I decided to choose another path. Now, if I'm going to lay down my life, at least it'll be for a good cause. That's why I ended up in Mendev and became, became a squire for the Hound Hearts. It's a small order. By tradition, it never has more than 12 members. A new member is only knighted after one of the elders dies. We patrol the lands along the Wardstone line, provide aid to travelers and settlers. Unfortunately, death is common among the Hound Hearts. I became a full knight two years ago, after laying my mentor to rest. I'm content with my choice. My place is among the Crusaders. They've been serving the Eagle Watch for long, Janna. I signed up four days before the demon attack. Am I lucky or what? Janna lets out an overly boisterous laugh. I'm an apprentice of a famous fencing master from Yvonne, and I learned a thing or two from him, believe me. I soon got bored of fighting off bandits and getting involved in the petty squabbles of the Bickering River Kingdoms. I wanted a proper challenge. You can't find a better place than Mendev. What do you know? The moment I arrived, the demonic evasion began. My father would say that's no accident. Fate brought me here. And what about you, Curl? How do you end up among the condemned? I just did what everyone else was doing. I grew up in the slums where everyone stole a little, or maybe smuggled, or guarded stashes, so... Curl stares into his mug gloomily. I never killed anybody, and never did anything really bad. I got caught stealing, and they made me choose between prison and the condemned. Well, of course I didn't want to go to prison. I'm not that good a fighter, but... As Norger... Norgerber is my witness. A thief can also be useful in a war against demons. I've always been a good scout. I can sneak under the nose of any monster. I don't know where my friends are now. We got separated when the demons rampaged through the city. Chin up, friend. Whoever you were in the past, you're a friend now. And a crusader. Your skills will be useful to us, you'll see. How do I love you know Sila? I met my noble sister on the road to Canabras. I was returning from the south from, from my fiancé. I was happy to be in the company of a paladin of Iomade. We said our farewells at the city gates, and I went north, along the road to Dresden, to my order's camp. Elin's face grows grim at the mention of the camp. The demons attacked us there the same time they struck Canabras. We managed to fight them off. We hurried to the city's aid and joined forces with the Eagle Watch. All my fellow hound hearts were wounded during the battle on the streets. I'm the last knight of my order who can still fight. It's so good to see Sila again. Every little heart counts these days. I met Sila at a tavern in Canabras. For the attack, of course. She's one of the few who would sit at the table with the condemned. Knights usually don't even look at us. But Sila is different. I knew it the moment I saw her. That's what made me notice Sila too. So I sat down to talk to her. Never understood why everyone treated the condemned so horribly. And I still don't. Our curl is a great lad. So after that night, Sila and I went round the taverns together every day. Mendev is an amazing place. People from all over the world come here. For glory, redemption, or to help those in trouble. And they always find each other. This might be the best place in the world to find like-minded people and friends. That was a toast, in case you didn't notice. Sila, did you call me over just because, or something the matter? I didn't just want to talk about today's celebration. You see, Elin is in trouble. I want to help him. I don't know anyone else in the city I can turn to. His fellow knights were all wounded in battle. Elin shakes his head. Bad idea, sister. I told you. I don't want to bother anyone else with my problems. I need to handle them on my own. 
Oh, come on. Hiding your sadness from your friends is no way to live. Earl is right. My coyote helped me find you. Without his help, I'd still be looking for you all over Canabras. So, Elin, come on. Stop being so stubborn. Uh, tell me more. The knight shakes his head. In all truth, I do not wish to impose. My problems are just minor troubles. A paladin of Iomade and her friend certainly have more important things to do. Especially now that Canabras has been overrun with demons. If I've learned anything in life, is that there's nothing minor about good and evil. Lila begins seriously, then a smile lights up her face. Take the three of you, for example. It seems like all you, all you did was save one cart from some lesser demons. But look how many people are happy now. That feat will never be sung of in songs. But who knows? Maybe thanks to this one joyous hour of peace and rest, the defenders of Canabras will find the strength to protect the city. Tila catches her breath. I talk too much, don't I? Well, Sir Elin, I want to help you. My reputation as a holy warrior of Iomade won't suffer if it's more of a minor minor adventure than a glorious feat. The knight sighs and seems a little embarrassed. Alright, I'll explain. The life of a crusader has given me more than just a purpose and a chance to serve a righteous cause. When I abandoned the life of a mercenary and came to Mendev, I gained something else I never expected. It's here that I met, and all the ladies here forgive me. The finest girl in all the world. It's a miracle she found any love in her own heart for a bungler like me. I'm not about to let this miracle go. Not even the demon Lord Discari and all his demon army can stand in my way. Luckily, my beloved is now safely away from Canabras. For half a year I've been getting up my courage to propose to her. I haven't ordered a ring from Derek Sunhammer, the best jeweler in Mendev. Independent knightly orders live mostly off donations. I'm not what you call what you would call rich, uh, but I still want to make Kiana happy. Oh, it took me three months to find a jewel the same shade as her eyes, and twice that long to scrape together enough money. Master Derek's work was worth it. But I lost the ring during the demon attack, and I'll probably never find a worthy replacement. I found a counterfeit, a sunhammer, ring or something. Uh, the ring is most likely still at the Houndheart's camp outside the city. Elin and his friends didn't have time to pack up their camp. First the demons ambushed them, then they rushed off to help Canabras. I think we should at least go there and check. Not right now, of course, once the situation in the city is under control. Now what could we run into at this camp? My friends and I killed two large demons attacking the camp, and rode straight to the city without spending any more time cleaning up the rest of their band. There's only a few imps they might still be at the camp. Of course, this was a little while ago. Our camp was attacked the same time as the wardstone in the main square. I haven't been back there since. Yeah, fine. I will help. Asila puts her hand on your shoulder. Thanks for agreeing to help. Elin is a good man and a true knight. I think the world uh, should repay those who are so devoted to doing good. Let's help him so he can propose to his beloved the way he wanted. Tila, hope you can convince Arabeth to let me go with you when you do this. I don't want to be parted from my friends. Of course. I believe the inspiring cart has come together in this dark hour. We must continue onward together. Alright, let's go talk to Four next. That is not far. The elf's pale, beautiful face bears an expression of melancholy detachment. How may I help? I think Alessa might be a drow. See, a shadow passes over Forn's eyes for a single instant, and his face is just as impassive as before. A drow? Unlikely. It's more plausible that her dark service has left a brand similar to the one that twisted the entire cur cursed drow race. A coincidence, I would think. I met Kalesa. His melancholic expression remains calm, but his entire body tenses, and his fingers wrap around the handle of his weapon. Under what circumstances? Hope you seize the opportunity to kill her. Are you certain of your allegations? Horn lowers his head and says in a hollow voice, I am. Her misdeeds are terrible, and proven with absolute certainty. She claims she doesn't serve the demons. Of course she does. In an attempt to buy her life, she would stoop to the uh, boldest and the most egregious lot of lies. Whose word, word do you trust? Hers or mine? I let her go. After giving you a sad look, look, Orn stares off into the, the distance. 
Your decision is regrettable. I'm afraid that in doing so, you've condemned her many future victims to death. I suppose it just means that bringing this hunt to a close falls upon my shoulders. Well, I'll go maybe don't lie to me next time. Alright, let's talk to Nenio. We'll go a little bit longer, knock out the conversation with her. We we'll have to talk to Ember as well. So you know what, actually we'll save that for next time. Off camera, I'll go back around and... See if any of the old NPCs have anything new to say. And then we will um, talk to Nenio and Ember in the next one. And then probably leave... The Defender's Heart and continue adventuring around the city. But for now, I'm going to call it here. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you guys in the next one.